Hello folks, this is Fuzzfinger. Welcome back to my Let's Play of Final Fantasy VII. So we left off in the previous episode, uh, right at the entrance to the Gold Saucer. And that is exactly where we're going today. We've already spoke to our party members. You can just enter the tram and begin a cutscene. A cutscene that in 1997 would have looked quite spectacular. Today, not so much. So this is, a, this is the gold saucer and I have to say it looks a lot bigger on the outside than it does on the inside. As you can see it's a giant amusement park and you'll be spending quite a bit of time here uh, during Final Fantasy VII, mainly for Chocobo reading which will be done much later. There is a load of other games here you might want to play around with but most of them are pretty crap to be honest so I'll probably just skip them. As you can see there is a save point over in the corner, you do have to pay to use it so I'm not going to bother. If you took my advice and saved just on the world map you probably won't need to use it now. Speak to this nice lady here. And you can purchase your entrance ticket, 3000 gil for today or 30,000 gil and you'll never have to pay again. I don't think I've got that though. So for now it's just going to have to be 3000 gil. Make sure you've got at least that much before you come here, otherwise you'll be back out farming again. GP is a currency you can only use at the Gold Saucer, and you can only collect it at the Gold Saucer. So this is the main hub, where you'll access all the other areas of the theme park. Yeah, Barrett doesn't really look like the playing type, does he? He's got a point to be honest, he's supposed to be after Sephiroth and Ares just wants to play at the Gold Saucer. Okay, the first thing we need to do is go to the Speed Square. And it looks like we're taking Ares with us. Here we'll meet Dio, the owner of the Gold Saucer, and he is perhaps the most weird character in the game. He walks around in his underpants. And he calls you boy. Yeah, if Final Fantasy VII gets remade into HD, this is just going to be weird. We will actually visit the Battle Arena later on, but not right now. For now, our second stop is the Wonder Square. And this is where we'll meet our new party member. K 
Kate Sith. Kate Sith is the cat on top of what is actually a giant cuddly toy. His fortune telling skills are not too spectacular. Come on boy, get on with it. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, losing something dear generally isn't something good, is it, you stupid cat? Okay, so we have a brand new party member, and interestingly, we now have the manipulate materia, which is extremely useful for learning certain enemy skills, which I'll talk about later when we're back on the world map, which won't be for a little while, but so we don't forget now, I'm going to de-equip Kate's, uh, Kate's it's materia, as I generally don't use him as a character because I can't stand him. Now, if you want to advance the story, you want to go into the battle square. But I'm just going to drop by into the ghost square, or the ghost town, or whatever it's called. Uh, because there is another Turtles Paradise Fly, the third one. And that's just over here. If you are doing that side quest, make sure you read this. There we go, that's number three. You only have to read it and it gets added to your collection. And when you're ready, you can enter the battle square. We'll also be spending quite a bit of time here later, uh, since there's some prizes which are quite powerful and you can only get them from this area of the game. But for now, we have a bit of story, so what's going on here? Oh dear. Well, we've got a dead Shinra soldier, and a few more Shinra so uh, soldiers that have been killed. Mm, interesting, they've been shot. Oh dear, getting blamed for something we did not do. The man with the underpants is on a mission to get us out. Quite frankly, I'll be happy to leave. Well, this doesn't seem good. Nope, welcome to Cobble Prison. A 
Okay. What has Barrett been up to the naughty boy? Yep, he certainly has. Let's go and see what Barrett's been playing at. Now this save point you can use for free. And while you're in prison you'll get weird inmates just following you around. Trying to drop the soap next to you or something I think. Anyway. To find Barrett I think we need to go in here. Come on, Babbitt, we just want some answers. Don't kill us, no! Well, as you might have guessed, we're about to get another little story section for Barrett. To complement the small bit we received earlier of information. And Barrett is travelling with Dine here, which you'll probably remember being introduced to in the last episode. Now we figure out, or get told I should say, uh, exactly what happened to Cobble. And Barrett gets the blame since he's the one who didn't want the reactor to be built. And Shinra have now burnt his town down. Let's move. No, I'm not controlling Barrett right now. This is just a watch and learn story. Okay, well now we know uh, Barrett's problem. <laughs> it's not a nice way to speak to Tifa. Okay, so Barrett is not an option. You have to take him in your party. And I think we'll take... Yuffie with us. I just want to double check actually something. 
yeah, it's the same party we had before. That's okay. Just want to make sure we've all got enemy skills since we will soon be learning one. Yep. A, a useful one as well, so. Right, we need to go and find Diny Boy. And you now get random enemy encounters. Use Blade Beam for the, uh... Mm, that's annoying. Uh, for the slight air of effects that you receive. Albeit not much. Right. There is an enemy around here that is useful. Uh, because of the enemy skill it gives. Although it's not here. It's in an area with lots of cars. Save our game. Since we have a boss fight coming up. And it's one that Barrett has to do alone. I don't think we go through that gate. Oh no, we do go through that gate. Sorry, I'll just, just in my own world then. Ah no, don't change. I really should start using the uh, the D-pad rather than the analog pad. It's just so bloody sensitive, it really is. No, give me my turbo ether back. That's a good item, that is. Yeah, that's better. Should get it back now, yep. Right, so, there's a dead man there. Hmm, I just want to check. I don't want to miss the enemies, you see. I don't want to engage battle with dying right at this very moment. Let's see what's over here. Yeah, it's absolutely nothing to be fair. Oh great, it's more steely stuff. What's he stolen? A gravity ball. I don't know what it is, but I want it back. Oh no. You've got to kill these things because they do run off if you don't uh, attack them quickly. And if they run off, they take whatever they stole off you. So they're just annoying to be honest. Fire level up, that's useful. Let's uh, throw an ether on Barrett. Okay, we'll keep leveling up fire. I'm pretty sure we can't go down here, can we? Oh no, we can. Hmm, nothing down there, so I'm not even going to bother going down. Okay. These are quite easy to kill. And I don't actually do any attacks uh, very quickly either. So you can pretty much finish them off before they actually do anything useful. Ah, that reminds me, we need to equip. Uh, we need to equip, let's get rid of that, we don't need that, the manipulate material. Anyway, once you go through this gate, you just want to keep heading east. And that is what we actually want. Let's kill this thing at the back, first of all.
Yeah, these claws are called death claws, and they have an extremely useful enemy skill. One we definitely want. I'm also going to see if we can manipulate them, because if we can, we might be able to force them to cast it on us. Since they don't use it all that often otherwise. Uh, where are we? Yuffie. Miss? Don't give me that crap. Anyway, the enemy skill we're after is called Laser. There we go. Nicely manipulated. And there's Laser. Let's start by casting it onto Cloud. See? How much damage that did? What it does, uh, basically, is reduce the uh, victim's hit points by half. And that is a bloody good spell, trust me. Especially on bosses. Uh, since a lot of bosses aren't even immune to it, you can do a lot of damage. We'll get him to cast it on himself, although he probably won't do too much. Yeah, he's almost dead. If it did 59 damage, it means he's got 59 health. And we've got a limit break built up with Barrett, so we'll certainly keep that for the uh, boss. And look at that, we need to heal. Pretty good spell, that is. I highly recommend you pick that up. Cure, cure, cure. Uh, let's give Yuffie's enemy skill to Barret. There we go, laser. Very nice. So this area you can also find those death claws. And make sure you do get that enemy skill before coming here. Since this will carry on with the story. Yeah, he's cracked. Don't go any closer, Barrett. Not if you value your life. That's a fair enough reason, I suppose. For a madman. Yeah, it's just a theory I've got. But I think that uh, Dine is actually Marlene's dad. And that Barrett just doesn't tell his party. Apart from the fact that Marlene seems to be white. And Barrett uh, is black. Just the way Dine talks about it, I do kind of get the feeling that it was his and uh, Eleanor's daughter. See, he thought Dine was gone and then found Marlene wandering around town.
This is my problem. Now we're going to start off by casting laser. Which he is immune to, so forget that idea. Honestly, it is a good spell. Don't let that put you off. And a lot of bosses are not immune to it, so this is just unfortunate that he is. Actually, in saying that, I think a lot of bosses are immune to it, but there's a lot of enemies that aren't, that have a lot of hit points. Uh, have we got... Yeah, we've got Cure, that's okay. I think we need to use it, don't we? Crikey, this guy hits hard. That's it, get your health up, Dallas. Dine's got 1200 hit points, so you might have to pummel him down a little bit since our balance by himself. And wow, he does two attacks at a time, that's just not fair. Yes, miss, we needed that. Oh boy, did we need that. Yes, we did. We'd almost certainly be dead otherwise now. And I wonder, not particularly want to have to reload the game of the game. Yeah, we need to cure again. Wow, this guy hits like a truck. Wow, that miss is useful as well. Okay, we're on full health. This has got to be a good time to use grenade bomb, surely. Come on, do some damage, please. Oh, wow. This guy's evil. Ooh. And we get uh, Barrett's second limit break, break, hammer blow for level two. So it would appear, Barrett, so it would appear. Right, see you dying. He's off for a bit now, I think. It's okay, Barrett. He was a bit of a madman, to be fair. No, no, we didn't kill him. He committed suicide, there is a subtle difference there.
Yeah, Cloud's the best choice. Oh wow, bit of a vibrant uh, outfit. Okay, so we're going to do a Chocobo race. This is the first of many Chocobo races we will be doing in Final Fantasy VII. Although, probably the only Chocobo race where it won't actually be our Chocobo, it'll be one we're borrowing off, some, off the Gold Saucer. Now there is a little trick when you're chocobo racing to keep your chocobo stamina up high. The only problem is you have to hold two buttons down at the same time. And I'm not totally sure which buttons they are on the Xbox control pad. So we're probably going to have to figure it out else we're not going to win. This here is Joe. And he's probably one of the top chocobo jockeys as Esther just tells us. When we do our own chocobo racing later to build up our chocobos for breeding, then we're going to bump into him a few times and he has a really fast chocobo. In fact, the game always makes sure it's faster than yours. Always. But he's not in this race, so we don't need to worry about him for now. Okay, so we'll just do what Esther says, but while we wait, we'll grab the next summon materia, the, the fourth summon materia, Ramu. And you can chat to the other jockeys if you want to. They don't seem to want to say much, to be fair. In fact, they're all off for the race. And all we can do is wait. La 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 la. Hopefully it won't be too much longer. Oh, here comes Esther. <laughs> yeah, we got it. We'll figure it out. Make sure you hit the uh, button that speeds you up. Ah, I think it's... Uh That's interesting. Oh, I see. We're on uh, automatic. We want manual. Gotcha. Now, I am speeding up the Chocobo. The only problem is that I'm not sure if I'm using the stamina trick or not. My stamina is slowly going down, and I was kind of hoping it would not be moving. We'll see what happens. I don't think there's anything else we can do really, is there? We're coming first. So maybe we are using the stamina trick. I don't know. We're actually coming quite close to the end of the race now as well. The only problem is that some of the other chocobos are probably going to start speeding past us. If they use the sprint, which is that. Personally, I'm not going to use it just yet, since we're still number one. Okay, let's use it now. Hopefully, it won't run out. We won't run out of stamina, and we've won. Awesome. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was using the stamina cheat then, or I don't think we would have done that. Oh, what do we get? A letter.
Yeah, I think we should get a gift for uh, coming first. Okay, so Gongaga is the next step for the story. Although we're going to be doing quite a bit of uh, optional stuff in the meantime. But for now, that's the end of the episode for today, since we've uh, done quite a long one through Coral Prism. But I hope you'll join me next time. We're going to be getting some pretty awesome enemy skills and a little trick for grinding up your character's levels as well, which I'll... Uh, show you so look forward to that until then I've been Fuzzfinger please rate up this video if you've enjoyed it it really supports me thank you very much uh, for joining me and I'll see you next time goodbye